Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a cinematic looking sci-fi loop in Blender. It's kind of like an abstract thing, but I'm going to show you the whole process from modeling, making the scene, setting up the materials. I'm even going to touch on a little bit of compositing. So you can see here it's playing. This is going to be the final result. And this is the actual blend file here. The final thing we'll be making, as you can see, if I can quickly play it. And I'm also going to be making this blend file available on my Patreon if you guys want to check that out in the description. So um, yeah, pretty straightforward. I would say this is kind of like a somewhere between beginner and intermediate, so it's not too hard. Um, yeah, let's get started. Enjoy. I've gone ahead and opened up a new scene in Blender. I've deleted all of the default objects. And we're going to get started with a UV sphere. So let's go Shift A and let's go to the mesh options here. Go down and get a UV sphere. With this UV sphere still active, we're going to go into our front orthographic view by hitting 1. Then we're going to go G, Z, and we're going to move this up till it's sitting on our red axis line here, or our floor. So just on the floor, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to go to our modifiers here, and we're going to give this one modifier, and that's going to be a subdivision surface modifier. Once we've done that, with this object still selected, we're going to go to object here, and we're going to come down and enable shade smooth. So now we've got this ni nice smooth shading, and it's all nice and round. So let's quickly go into edit mode. We're going to do one specific thing. In fact, before we edit it, let's just quickly duplicate it. So we're going to go Shift D to duplicate it, and then Y, and just move it over to the side. So just duplicate one, move it over to the side. Then select the original here, tab into edit mode, go to your edge select here, and if you deselect everything, and you go Shift and Alt, so hold Shift and Alt, and click on one of these edges here in the middle. It'll loop select these edges. Then we're going to go Control B to bevel. So Control B, create a bevel. So about this much. Then if you roll your middle mouse button once, you can add in a little cut in the middle. And then just click to let go. And now if we go Control minus to shrink the selection, we can see we only have this one edge here in the middle active. So we're going to go Alt S and we're going to scale it in just a little bit. So Alt S like that. And then we're going to come in here, Control R. So hover over one of these edges with your mouse, Control R. You'll see a yellow line, double click. And then double G just to slide it down like that, and then over here, Control R, double click, double G, just to slide it in and drag it up like that. So now we have this nice um, divot in here, this like little border that goes around here. It's just a little decorative feature. And we have the ball earlier that we duplicated. So we're now back in object mode. So let's actually grab, let's go hit seven to go to our top of graphic view. So we're just gonna take this duplicated ball and just move it over to the side here and S to scale it down. So just, well, something like this. It doesn't have to be too small. And um, we're going to grab this one here, and we're going to go Shift D and just move it over to the side. It doesn't have to be precise. So once you're in your front of graphic view, you're going to see this. You're going to see this main ball here, and then you're going to see these two smaller ones. And they don't have to be exact. They can just kind of be like somewhere around here. We're going to be giving them a little bit of random offset anyway. Now that's all good so far, but now we need to add in our um, scene here, our little environment. So let's go Shift A. Let's add in a plane. And with this plane here active, we're going to S, hit S to scale it up. And I'm not going to type in anything specific. I'm just scaling it up roughly like this, about that scale. I'm going to tab into edit mode. And with all of this geometry active, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on subdivide. I'm going to come here to the subdivisions tab and let's make it something like 40 subdivisions. In fact, maybe even more. I'll make it 60 subdivisions. Then I'm going to tab out of edit mode. I'm going to go to my modifiers tab here. And I'm going to give this a displacement modifier. I'm also with this guy still active, the plane. I'm going to go Control A just to apply the scale. And then I'm going to go over to my um, textures tab here, textures properties. I'm going to click on new. And now we're going to come to the texture. Um, you can name it whatever. I'm just going to call it bumps. You don't really have to name it. I just like to do that. Then I'm going to come to the type here. I'm going to make it clouds. You can experiment with some different ones, but I'm going to stick with clouds. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my uh, modifiers here and I'm going to mess around with the strength. So um, you can try different things. If it's too much or too little, just try some um, different settings. So I'm going to go with something like that. And then on top of that, I'm going to give a subdivision surface modifier, as you can see here. Then I'm going to do object mode and enable shade smooth. So now we're going to see this over here. Now you can come over here to the texture properties and you can mess around with the scale kind of like frequency here to try and um, adjust it to something that works for you. In fact, you can also even come up here, you can grab under your modifiers, you can grab the displacement and place it underneath the subdivision surface modifier. And then on top of that, you can, um, you can even add another subdivision surface modifier on top of that one as well. Then you can go back to your um, texture here 
and you can still experiment around with the scale. So um, there's a lot of different things you can do. So I'm just going to go with something like that. Now you guys can mess around with all different settings till you kind of find something that you like. But I'm going to go with something like this and then I'm going to go with this still active. I'm going to go G, Z, and I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, not too much. Maybe just about that much. So now we can see it's not, uh, if we go into a front orthographic view, you can see these balls are not intersecting with any of this geometry. So the more uh, you have bump on here, the lower you might have to bring it down. So just keep that in mind. So now we're gonna add in a camera to our scene. So let's come over here to the side. So if you're in your front view, come over to the side like this, right? And just hit Shift A and add in a camera. And then hit zero with that camera active up here. You can see the camera is active. We're going to hit zero to go into camera view. With the camera active, we're going to hit G and then press your middle mouse button and just pull your mouse back and you're going to see it zooming out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our camera settings with the camera still active. And we're going to come here to the focal length and make it 125. And then once again, we'll have to go G and then middle mouse button and just kind of pull back till we get something like this. Now we're going to go over to our output settings here and I'm going to come here to the Y resolution. I'm going to make it 920. That's going to make the aspect ratio a little bit different and that's kind of what I'm going for here. So while the camera is still active, you can also double tap R just to rotate it like this. But it doesn't matter too much because what we're going to do with the camera still active, we're going to go over to our constraints, our constraints tab over here. Add object constraint, we're going to give track to constraint. So come over here and give it a track to constraint. Then we're going to come and click on the eyedropper and we're going to select this main sphere over here. So now it doesn't matter where our sphere is located, the camera will always be tracking it. In fact, if I select the camera and I hit G to move it, it doesn't matter, we can see it's always going to be tracking that um, sphere there in the middle. So now also let's just grab our um, plane here and towards the back, if we go into edit mode, I'm just going to um, select these edges on the outside, so this edge and this edge. I'm going to go to my proportional editing, then I'm going to go G, Z, and I'm just going to move it up like this while I roll my middle mouse button. So just to create a little bit of a ledge up like that. Tab out of edit mode. So now if we go into my camera view, it just gives me a little bit more um, scene there in the background. So if, if we don't get any situation where our camera is going to be um, looking out of the world too much. So just something like that. Okay, so now we can get into some animation here. So we're gonna go Shift A, add in a empty, we're gonna go for a cube. And you're gonna place this guy right here roughly where your sphere is. Then we're gonna take these two main little spheres. So I'm holding in Shift while I'm selecting both of them. And then hold in Shift still, we're gonna select the empty, the last. Control P and we're gonna go object, keep transform. So now if we grab the empty here, by clicking on it and we move it, you can see those two spheres go along. So if we come over here to our timeline, so drag up the timeline here, we're gonna come over to frame one. So on frame one with this empty active here, we're gonna insert our first animation keyframe. So we're gonna hit I, so make sure on keyframe you have to empty selected. We're gonna hit I and we're gonna insert a rotation keyframe. Then we're gonna come over to frame 250 and then we're gonna hit the end key to bring up our properties panel over here. Go to the item, if you go to the Z value here, you can type in 360. And then while you're hovering over it, hit the I key to insert a keyframe in there. So now we have these two keyframes. But what we also need to do is just select both of them by clicking and dragging. So you can see they're both orange. And while we're hovering over here, hit T on your keyboard and make that animation linear. So now if we go into our camera view by hitting zero and we go to first frame, hit the space bar. And you can see this is our little animation here. But what we also want to do to make it look cool is we want to select our frame, our ball here, the main ball. Go to frame one. And then frame one, we're going to just rotate it off to the side a little bit like this. And then double tap R. Just give it a kind of like a position it some, in some way that looks um, cool. Okay. So I'm going to go with something like that. Then hit I and insert a rotation keyframe. And then also you're going to go over to frame 250, hit I and insert the exact same rotation keyframe. The end and beginning need to be the same if you want it to be loopable. And then you can just go to different frames here, for example, frame 60, double tap R and just kind of rotate it off a little bit, hit I and insert a rotation keyframe. Move over to 200, 120, rotate it a little bit and hit I to insert a keyframe for the rotation. 
and so on. So this is just one little um, technique you can use. You can do this procedurally with nodes or noise or whatever, but I'm just gonna do it manually with the keyframes because it's just such a simple little scene. So you can see here, we're getting a little bit of this rotation here with this guy. You can also, with it selected, go to frame one, hit I and also insert a location keyframe. Make sure to go to the end frame, hit I and insert a location keyframe. Then if you go to like somewhere in your middle frame, you can go G, Z and move it up a little bit, hit I and insert a location keyframe. And maybe come somewhere else, bring it down a little bit, I insert a location keyframe. And that's also gonna give you a little bit of up and down wobble as you play the animation. But as long as your keyframes on the beginning frame and the end frames are the same, that's gonna be the most, most important thing. So you can have like a loopable animation if that's kind of what you're going for. So now we can see we have this all in place. So where this is really gonna become awesome is gonna be with the materials and the shaders. So you're gonna go to the description below and I'm gonna just leave these links here. So the first one you're gonna download is gonna be this HDRI over here. Come down, download whichever one of these you want. And then you're gonna to come to the second um, link below and you're gonna download one of these textures. Now they're all free, so I downloaded it this one over here, I just clicked on the top one for download. And then I put both of those files on my desktop here. So you can see I have the HDRI and I have the metal texture here. Now the metal texture isn't seamless, but it doesn't really matter in this case. So let's just go back to our scene here and let's get started with the material. So we're gonna select these spheres first. I'm gonna select the main sphere. I'm gonna go to my materials tab, I'm gonna go new and I'm just gonna call it sphere. And then I'm gonna go over to my shading workspace. I'm gonna go into my camera view. I'm gonna hit Z and I'm gonna go render. So now we're in our shading workspace. But we need to go to our render settings. So go over here to the little camera. Make sure to enable ambient occlusion and also screen space reflections. And we're gonna be working with EV here. So let's go add in some of our first lights. So we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna to go to our light options, add in an area light. G, Z to move it up. And go over to your light settings and then we're gonna increase the strength to 300. And we're gonna increase the size a little bit like this. Then we're gonna go G, Z, move it up. And um, maybe make it 500 actually. So go into your camera view. And you can kind of see this is what we have. So I'm gonna move it over to the side. Then I'm gonna hit R to rotate it in like this. And in your top orthographic view, you can just hit Shift D to duplicate it, bring it over to the side and rotate it in like this. We'll mess around with them a little bit later. But the main thing that's gonna make this look cool is a HDRI. So let's go over to our world settings here. I'm gonna click on this little surface tab here. So not the surface tab, the color tab, so the little dot here. We're gonna go to environment texture, click on open, and then go to the desktop or wherever and get that HDRI I put in the description below. So this one, abandoned hopper terminal. And then I'm gonna click open image. So right off the bat, it's gonna be way too powerful. So we're gonna come here to the strength and we're gonna make it 0.3, so 0.3. And then over here in our um, workspace, we're gonna come, because we're in our shading workspace, we're gonna come to this little tab here, we're gonna make it world. Now we can see we have this um, texture here, the HDRI, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, search, get a mapping node, type in mapping, click on it, drag the vector into the vector here, and then we're gonna go Shift A, search, and get a texture coordinate. Now if you have node wrangler enabled, you can do this with a shortcut, but just in case some of you don't, I'm just gonna do this. So once you have the texture coordinate, drag to generate it into the top socket of the mapping node here. So all we're gonna do here now is also come over to the Z value here on the rotation. And for this HRI, I'm gonna go with 220. This is gonna give us a bit nicer looking lighting like that. So we can always adjust that later on, but let's get into our material. So let's go back to the world tab here and make that object. So now click on the main sphere over here. And we're gonna see here we have that sphere material. So I spelt sphere wrong, I'm just gonna quickly correct that. So in this sphere material, we can see we have our default principal shader. So we're gonna go Shift A, search, and get an image texture. Once again, you can do this with the Node Wrangler, but I'm just gonna plug the image texture into the base color here. And then I'm gonna go Shift A, search. Once again, we're just gonna get a mapping node plug the vector into here, and then once again, shift A, search, and get a texture coordinate. And then we're gonna plug the object into the vector here. Now that we have these nodes set up, we're gonna click on the open here, and we're gonna to go to our desktop, and let's get that metal bare material that we I put in the description below. Click open image. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the flat option here under the image texture. We're going to make it box because we want to do box projection. And let's just actually take the generated and plug it into the vector here instead. And the mapping. So now we can see this is what we have. But if we come over here to the side, we can drag the metallic slider all the way up to one to make it look metallic. And um, we can add in some different nodes to change the color as well. So let's drag the image texture over to the side of it. Shift A, search, and let's type in color. Click on color ramp and then place it on this line here. So now this metal bare texture is going into this um, color ramp. Color ramps going into the principal color. So now we can just grab this black value. We're going to drag it up just a little bit and then drag this white all the way down like this. So now we have that metallic here and we're going to actually select this color ramp. We're going to hit Shift D to duplicate it, bring it down, then take the color from the by, um, the image texture, plug it into the factor down here as well. And now we're going to take this color output from the bottom one and plug it into the roughness of the principal shader. And you can mess around with this roughness here for some different effects, but I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. So just like that. And while we're here with the sphere, I'm just going to go over to my materials tab and I'm going to click plus again, go new, and I'm just going to call this light. Then I'm going to go over here to the surface. I'm going to go up and make it an emission. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode of this sphere selected. And I'm just going to zoom in here, shift alt. I'm going to click on the edge in the middle here. I'm going to go control plus once to grow the selection. So if these inward faces selected, I'm going to click on that light material and I'm going to assign it. I'm going to tab out of edit mode, hit zero to go back into camera view, Z and then render it again. So now we can see we have this emissive material. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to make it blue, like this, and I'm going to make the strength free, like that. We'll get into the mission stuff later a bit more with the glow and things. But what we need to do is also select these smaller balls and just give them that same sphere material. So I'm going to select both of them, come to the drop down, and just give them that same metallic material. So now we can also get started with the actual ground material itself. So I'm going to select the ground material. So actually just select the ground plane itself click new and let's just call this ground like that I'm gonna hit zero to go into my camera view and instead of making all of these nodes over again what we can simply do is select one of these spheres and with that sphere material here selected we can click anywhere in the workspace down here drag you can see they're all active right click and then go copy so now if we click on the ground and we're inside this ground material here we're just gonna select these two nodes X to delete them right click here and then go paste so now we don't have to start from scratch so this one what we're going to do is we're going to come to the metallic slider and we're going to drag the metallic value down a little bit we're also going to come up here to the color ramp material and we're going to take the white value at the top so the top color ramp material we're going to take this white tag click on it click on here and then bring that value down to make it a little bit darker kind of like a dark gray and we're going to just adjust these two a little bit so i'm going to drag this black value up a bit and then drag this one up a bit, but I'm going to select the black value and I'm going to make it like a dark gray more than a black. So just something like that. Then we're going to come down here to the roughness and we're going to just adjust the roughness a little bit. So I'm going to bring this black value down and then bring this white down just a little bit. So that's going to adjust our roughness. But what we also want to do is we want to add some glowy effects in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this bottom color ramp here. So make sure you click on it and then go shift D to duplicate it, drag it above the top color ramp here. And then we're going to take this color output here from the image texture, plug it into the factor as well. We're going to come down here to where the material output is, drag it over a little bit, then go shift A, search, and we're going to get a mix shader. So type in mix, get a mix shader, place it over here. So we're going to put the bottom input into here. And then we're going to go shift A, search, we're going to type in EM, then click on emission, so get the emission shader, put it over here, drag the emission into the top socket, and then we're going to come over here, we're going to make the emission here kind of a blue as well, and now we're going to use the mix from this top color ramp as a mask, so we're going to grab the color, plug it into the factor here of our mix shader at the top. So now all we simply have to do is come in here and adjust the slider, so I'm going to actually take the black value, drag it past the white value to the top somewhere here, and then we can take this white slider and adjust that accordingly. So try different things, um, whatever works for you. So I'm going to go with something kind of like that. You can also come over here down to the mapping node 
And let's try something like a value of three on the scale. So I'm gonna type in three in all of these vectors here, like that. So that looks a little bit better. And once again, you can just come up here and control the amount of glow effect coming through by using this color ramp here. So just something like that. But at the moment, it still doesn't look really awesome. And what we're gonna do now, is while we're still in rendered mode here, is we're gonna come up here to our scene collections and we're gonna click on the camera to make it active. Come to your camera settings and we're gonna go down here, click on depth of field. At the moment, it's applying it everywhere. So we're gonna to come to the drop down here, click on the eyedropper and we're gonna click on that ball over there. And now we're gonna to come to the f-stop here and we're gonna make it point three and hit enter. So now we have that nice depth of field as well. In fact, I might make it point two, make it a little bit deeper. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my render settings here and I'm gonna enable bloom. So now we get that nice bloom effect going here with that material. You can come to the drop down on the bloom and you can bring up the intensity to one. And then what you can do is you can come here to the radius and just decrease it a little bit like that. And um, maybe I'll make it 0.8 instead of one. So there you can see we now have that cool effect. And if we come over here down to this object here and we come and make it world, what, what we can do if we go to our nodes here for our HDRI, we can come to the Z value here and just rotate it till our HDRI lighting kind of matches up and makes it look really cool. So I'm gonna just kind of stick with about 220, 230 for this particular HDRI, but it might be different for your scene. So now let's quickly give it a test render. So we're gonna to go to our layout again, and I'm just gonna scrub through my animation till I get a cool looking effect um, position. So something like this looks cool. I'm gonna go render, render image, and now we can see here we have the final rendered image here. So it looks pretty cool. But now if we click on that, um, because it's opened up a new render window, if we just close it and we go over to our compositing workspace, click on use nodes. Then we actually can go shift A over here, search, and we're gonna type in view. Just get a viewer node. And then move this node over, take the cut image, plug it into the image down here as well. So now you can see it. And if you hit V, you can zoom out. And Alt V, you can zoom in. So just hit V to zoom out a bit. And now we're gonna go shift A search. We're gonna get a lens distortion node, click on it. Just place it on top of one of these. Then take the image here and plug it, um, just plug it out. So now we're gonna take the image from the lens distortion and plug it into both of these nodes. So the composite just composites it. The viewer allows you to see it here while you're working. So we're gonna come here to the distortion. We're gonna make it 0.05. And we're gonna come to the dispersion, make it 0.03. And once we're done with that, we're just gonna click fit and it's gonna kind of fit it to the frame. So now we have this nice kind of um, effect going on here in the composite that's making it look a little bit better as well. So let's quickly go back to our layout. We now have our compositing set up. Um, one more thing we can do to make this look really cool before we render it out as a final animation. We can go shift A, go down to your lights, add in a point light, go to your top view and hit G with that light, put it behind the sphere here and under the light settings, increase the radius a bit, make it slightly bluish, and then bump the strength up to 60 or something. In your camera view, Z, hit render, and now we can kind of put this behind here as a nice kind of rim lighting effect. So I might just decrease the size a bit. Try different things, I might make the power a bit less. Shift D to duplicate it, and just moving it around the spheres here, and it's just kind of creating this nice rim lighting effect here. This just makes it um, pop out a little bit better. So something like that looks pretty cool. Um, you can mess around, once again, if you select your camera under the depth of field, you can mess around with the f-stop a little bit as well. So maybe something like that looks better. And um, yeah, just experiment. Um, I might also just come to the render settings here, go to the bloom and just bring up that threshold just a little bit till it's not so intense. So just something like that. And um, yeah, it's looking pretty cool. Um, what are some other things we can do? Yeah, we could probably add a little bit of animation to the camera. So I'm gonna go back to the solid view. And with the camera selected, I'm just gonna go to frame one. Once again, you could do this better than I'm about to do it with like noise and stuff, but I'm just gonna hit I on frame one with the camera selected. I'm gonna insert a location keyframe. Then I'm gonna go to frame 250, I, and insert a location keyframe. And then this around here, I'm just gonna hit G and move it just slightly. Hit I and insert a location keyframe. 
move up a bit, hit G to move the camera a little bit, I insert a location keyframe and then so on. And this, these little things are going to create a bit of random movement, I insert a location keyframe. So all it does is it just gives the camera a little bit of movement like this, um, kind of makes it look cool. In fact, you can grab the camera, maybe move, move it up a bit. So yeah, just try different things. I'm just moving it slightly and adding, inserting location keyframes. So just try different things like that. Yeah, it just makes it look a little bit more handheld or something. But if you like this so far, we are almost ready to get into the actual um, rendering. So I'm just gonna get a um, frame that I like. I'm gonna go render image and just give it one final look just to see what it looks like. And here we have it. So now I'm going to show you how we can render this out as a final animation once you're kind of satisfied with how it looks. So I'm going to close this. Then I'm going to go over here to my output settings. Obviously make sure to save the file. So I'm just going to go to my desktop and call it um, file or whatever. Call it whatever you want. Save as. And now we're going to go over here to output settings. Click on the file. I'm going to select my desktop. I'm going to go accept. Go to the file format. Let's just make it an FFmpeg video. You can go to your encoder and let's just make the container here an MP4. Once again, just make sure to save. And then you can go render and render animation. And it might take a few hours or whatever, depends on your computer, a few minutes. But it'll render this out as a final animation onto your desktop, an MP4. And then you can watch it. So I'm not going to do that now because I've um, already done it myself. But I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. Once again, this file is going to be available on my Patreon. And when you guys join Patreon, it really does help me um, support the channel and um, keep making this content for you guys. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.